Welcome to Lacoon Mobile Security's educational video series. When it comes to security, iOS commonly receives the People Choice Award. But is that in fact the case? In this episode, we'll describe the top five cybersecurity risks facing iOS based devices and the mitigation controls to protect against them. Before we start talking about the risks, we at Lacoon Mobile Security first wanted to test the reality of the iOS security assumption. In June 2013, we partnered with a global cellular network provider and randomly sampled 650k subscribers. The numbers were astonishing. 1 in 1,000 devices were infected with mobile surveillance and remote access trojans. 47% of compromised devices were iOS-based. Furthermore, 13% of compromised devices were running iOS 6, the newest iOS version at that time. It comes to show that the iOS platform shares a fair share of threats. What are the risks? Risk number one, jailbreaking devices and installing mobile surveillance and mobile remote access trojans, also known as MRATs, from alternative markets. These attacks leverage a jailbroken device, which means that all the built-in iOS security mechanisms have been removed. In turn, an attacker can install a malicious executable, the MRAT. As its name implies, a remote access trojan takes full control of the sensors and the hardware of the mobile device without the owner's knowledge. An MRAT on an infected employee's device is capable of snooping on corporate emails containing contracts, eavesdropping on customer or board meetings, accessing third-party apps such as Skype, and retrieving the data of enterprise-dedicated apps in order to track roadmap activities. MRATs can also trail a sales executive location and infiltrate the internal corporate network to retrieve, for example, sensitive passwords of corporate servers. The thing is that installing an MRAT requires jailbreaking the device. However, it's not unusual for iOS users to jailbreak their own device in order to allow them to install any iOS application they want, not just those from Apple's proprietary store. Attackers can also jailbreak an iOS device themselves by physically obtaining access to the device or propagating the jailbreak code from a compromised computer through a USB cable. Once a device is jailbroken, attackers can then proceed to install the MRAT of their choice. One method attackers do this is by disguising their wares within an application distributed in a third-party app store for an unwitting user to download. Once the MRAT is installed, it also removes any visible traces of the device's jailbroken state. Risk number two, using distribution certificates to sideload malware without passing through the app store validation process. In this attack, Malicious software accompanied by certificates validated by Apple, but not representative of a trusted organization, are installed in a device using the Apple iOS. Let's take a look at these certificates. Apple grants two different third-party certificates to organizations that agree to adhere to Apple's guidelines. There are developer certificates, which allow developers to test their apps before they go public on the Apple App Store. And enterprise certificates, which provide organizations the opportunity to establish their own in-house marketplace for dedicated apps. Behind the scenes, Apple validates an app is signed by a trusted certificate before allowing it to be sideloaded on the device. In other words, Apple verifies that the app can be installed not through the Apple App Store. If attackers are able to obtain a certificate, they can use it to validate their malware and install it on any iOS-based device without passing it through the App Store's vetting process. It's important to note that given the volume of apps, it is very difficult for Apple to monitor the use of certificates. As a result, attacks have started to emerge, such as the FinFisher MRAT, which uses these certificates. Also in this attack, the malware can act as an MRAT, enabling the attacker to take full control of the device. Risk number three, malicious profiles. In this type of attack, an attacker tricks the user to install a device configuration profile, which changes the device and network settings. A user is typically tricked to download a malicious profile. By doing so, the user unknowingly provides the rogue configuration the ability to reroute all traffic from the mobile device to an attacker-controlled server, further install rogue apps, and even decrypt communications. The disturbing reality is that attackers are not the only ones distributing profiles to reconfigure the device settings. Also, legitimate and popular companies have found profiles a viable way to enhance their offering. This, for instance, is what LinkedIn does with its LinkedIn intro. 
LinkedIn Intro is a configuration profile which reroutes incoming emails through LinkedIn servers in order to add the sender's details to the received emails. Risk number four, Wi-Fi man in the middle attacks. In these attacks, the user usually believes that they are interacting with a known trusted entity, typically a website. Behind the scenes, however, the adversary can eavesdrop on the session. An attacker can even alter the encrypted network's communications, ISSL, by using spoofed certificates or downgrading the communication link. In effect, the communications become completely open to the attacker. Man in the middle attacks exist also in the PC world. However, these attacks are exacerbated in the mobile world, where the typical alert and warning signs that individuals are used to noticing on PCs and laptops are much more subtle in their mobile counterparts. More so, with limited screen real estate, URLs are hidden from the user, so it's harder for them to validate that the URL the browser is pointing to is actually the intended one. Risk number five, zero-day system vulnerabilities and WebKit exploits. The risk here is of system vulnerabilities that are exploited to allow the attacker to jailbreak the device without leaving any trace. Many times, these vulnerabilities lead to the silent installation of MRATs on a device through a remote exploitation technique. These zero-day vulnerabilities are vulnerabilities that have been uncovered, but not yet released with vulnerability researchers earning purportedly 500k per vulnerability, uncovering vulnerability has become a very profitable line of business. On the screen, you can see a short list from the dozens of WebKit vulnerabilities affecting the iOS browser that were uncovered in the past year. WebKit vulnerabilities are significant since they allow the attacker to execute any script and are commonly used by attackers as a springboard for remote infection of the device. How can you mitigate these threats? The first thing is to recognize that current solutions designed to address the BYOD challenge fail to protect against these risks. For example, mobile device management, which do mobile policy management and enforcement, contain only static policies. These policies only solve simple security problems, for example, ensuring that users use a PIN to unlock their device, that they cannot download specific apps, and so forth. Network gateways enforce network-based protection to block attacks from coming into the network. These solutions are mainly optimized for web browsing threats. On-device protection, such as antivirus, do not exist for iOS platform, only for Android. And even so, they are very limited in scope, whereas they detect only known threats. Consequently, there is a significant gap in protecting iOS devices from a targeted compromise of a device. In order to protect and mitigate cybersecurity risks on iOS devices, Lacoon solution is capable of detecting compromised devices. This is done by addressing the specific gaps using a continuous behavioral detection of the device. This solution enables users to detect jailbroken devices and detect installed MRATs using network analysis. Detect sideloaded applications that use certificates not approved by the enterprise. Inspect unknown configuration profiles and detect if they compromise communications between the device and the enterprise resources. Once a compromised device is detected, the system alerts the user and activates the active protection layer to block the connection between the device and the enterprise. Thank you. You're welcome to follow us on Twitter, join our LinkedIn group, and read our blog for mobile security updates and customer advisories.